And boop, boop. Oh, good grief. I've been talking this whole time and nobody can hear me. Thanks for, thanks for asking where the announcer is there, K.A. Hames. So I will go ahead and click over here. Sorry about that. <coughs> Pardon me. Good grief. All right. Well, all right. So I got a few minutes worth of content that I can go all the way back over again, which I will. Toast go going ahead with a 1-1-1 one, one, one build and Alienoid working out working out with zergling zergling speed he has he has coming up another another overlords providing more supply and and he is morphing his hatchery into a layer um while 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 dropping his gas um alienoid being a zerg player this year last year he played he he played protoss and this year playing playing zerg zerg being a bug type race um alienoid and zerg have both or alienoid and toast have both been teammates now since really the beginnings of 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 nebraska esports even before the the nisa nebraska nebraska scholastic esports association was even a thing they were some of the some of the ogs for nebraska Nebraska esports and have been teammates now for the last oh good grief have been teammates for the last four years starting when Toast was in seventh grade and Alienoid was a freshman now Toast is a sophomore Alienoid into his senior year um, as these two teammates they have not played against each other all year and so it's really a special thing starting at at the end of the year that their first best of three match is finals at state so i think that was very fitting oh turtles too can also get a shout out there we go turtles all for you that would be my nephew so good, good to have family watching we have we have, we have toast coming in with two siege tanks and oh and a buttload of marines and toast is going to go ahead and move out alienoid starting a third base and toast is going to move out let's make sure he builds on the back okay as he goes ahead and goes out, he is supply blocked though. And so he needs to finish that out. Oh, here come the Lings. Here come the Lings and Ravagers. They're gonna go ahead and back off. We'll see what happens. The Ravagers go, go ahead and drop their bile. Oh, does massive amounts to Marines. The Toast goes ahead and sieges up the siege tanks as Alienoid backs off behind he's going to try to run in again he, they have very few marines oh no he caught him with with again with the with the corrosive bile toast goes it goes it goes ahead and forms back up he starts building more production on the backside as alienoid will go back these are ravagers they have a thing over here called corrosive bile which has a which which has a seven second cooldown that they can deal massive amounts of damage, 60 damage. Oh, and the siege tank got him right there. Let's look at the range on that. So, looks like looks like Alienoid is going to try and find a cheeky way around up on the high ground to where to where he can see. Oh, eh, nope, doesn't quite reach it. Doesn't quite get there. Can't quite find the correct angle. And notice that, okay, there he goes, starting to build on the back. Okay, I, 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 I've coached both these guys, so I was in a very unique position. Okay, Toast goes ahead and runs a couple of scans to see where Alienoid is. And again, if we look at Toast's point of view, all he can see is here. He knows, he knows, he knows Alienoid has a base here, but that is, is it, going back to Alienoid's point of view. Alienoid does not have any more units out. He brings his units back and goes ahead and starts macroing up, building more Zerglings, building while while while, while Toast being supply blocked. They're both supply blocked. We've I've really talked to him about that. So they are trying to get up the larva to get back up out of that. Toast is going a Raven. We'll go back to see everybody. Everybody a Raven coming out of here. Raven is a detector unit. Sometimes. Sometimes, oh, he goes out and takes care of that. I missed the, I missed the, there we go, okay. 
kind of missed that. Missed that. Sorry about that, guys. As he as he goes out, he's on a fully saturated third base. He needs to drop his gas now. And working seven out of sixteen there, and thirteen out of fourteen there. Not bad. He's getting upgrades to his hydralis. Has an infester pit, evolution chamber. He has not upgraded his roaches. I don't believe he will. He's he's gonna go ahead and, and get carapace, and he has just fit and he's just finished his lair. So he'll be able to build. Looks like we will see what he's doing. He's gonna go ahead and, and, and build on the back or build another expansion here so we can have access to mine these minerals. Looking back at Toast, Toast, he has go ahead. He's gonna drop his third gas and he has, and he has a third base already mining out. Or, or, or already fully saturated in mind. His expansion right here, fully saturated in mind. And his main is actually starting to mine out. So let's see what he has. He only has two factories that he's, that he's producing out of and starting to pile up minerals and stuff like that. You can see the supply, 139 to 109. This is kind of a decent gauge of who's ahead and, and who's not if you look up here at, at, at the top. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the upgrades. Okay, toast with zero upgrades. So that's a problem. He is working on them currently right now with with um, with uh, uh, Alienoid, the senior having having upgrades already done. Okay, here we go. Lots of lots of stuff being built at the same time. Muscular arguments, Zerg melee attacks, one Zerg. Okay, missile attacks to getting up, getting up more, more, more overlords to up this second number here. Toast also, also taking out, he's only on two factories on that. Oh, it looks like he's going to go ahead and move across. He has a Raven out, out front. Ravens, if you look here, it says a detector unit. Oh, Toast and Alienoid sends it back out, sends the Lings back out, and they find it, they find a big army right there. So let's see what Alienoid is going to do. He does have some Hydras, oop, and he does have Lurkers. Lurkers deal big, big damage. They've just finished plus two attack, two one, two one attack. Alienoid's gonna go ahead and move that back out. His his his, his tanks, and he's gonna send in some send in some lings. A little bit of touch and go back it back and forth. Okay, let's see. Toast has factory, command center, Thor, Marine, third, but he is supply blocked yet again. Oh, there he goes. He just added a little more supply. Okay, Alienoid going, going, going ahead and losing little, trying to, trying to just pick this army apart little by little. We have a scan from Toast as he goes ahead so we can see the high ground. And he's going to try and go up through this narrow passage on this ramp. He's not. He's going to go ahead and back off. That's probably a good idea. This is a nice choke point right here that you can hold stuff through. And Alienoid with Lurkers back here. That deal, that, that deal, 24 damage with spikes through the ground. They have super long range and 36 damage to armored. So that would deal 36 damage to a Thor. Thor's being in with with Chose just being on one zero. Um that is a lot of damage to that. Okay. Alienoids Alienoid being on two two attack, one armor with with a little better upgrades. Gonna finish his adrenal glands pretty soon. That makes his um lings go in and attack super fast. Alienoid doing what he does best and sending the lings over over hunting, trying to sniff out extra bases while 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 Toast is army is sitting here in the middle. He's gonna go ahead and oh he does not have he has to run a scan to see those lurkers and he does not have them as Alienoid goes ahead and cleans those up. And they will clean that up. And now it's Alienoid on the attack, sending in the Ling, sending in everything that he has. Toast with only with only just a few, only just 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 a few Thors. Oh wait, here comes the rest of the army, as they go ahead and move in. And move in with with that Alienoid going going ahead and dropping corrosive biles. And Toast going going to go ahead and back off. He has 
He has one, two, three. He's building four at a time now. Almost there he goes. He's built. He's able to build. He's able to build four Thors at a time now, which will definitely help out as he goes in with Thor and Marines being one one. Thor's one one is now completed. He goes ahead and and rebuilds the base, and he's going to go right up through the middle. Going to go right up through the middle again. Alienoid spreading all over the place like a good Zerg should. Toast going to go ahead and go back to the middle with Alienoid going through this choke point. He only he only has Thors. He meets up with and he scans just in case there's any there's any lurkers there. He's going to go back up around the other side, moving his army around to the left side, building four more Thors on the back. Toast being maxed out, so he has to push. He has to go, okay? <coughs> but he has no detection. He does not have a Raven, nor does he have a Raven on the way. So he's just hoping to do it with scans as he slowly moves moves forward with, with scans. But the, but just the lings, just the amount of just the amount of hydralisks here that deal 10, 11 damage. It's going to push all the way through. And that will be the end of that army. With lots of lurkers going back through into that. With Toast going going ahead, remaxing out, rebuilding, rebuilding his army, going, going out. It takes Thor's a while to crank out, and here comes the flood of Zerg. Going in there, Toast still still having more supply. He needs a detector unit. I still don't think he has one up. He's trying to work off of scans, but he needs something because these units here are invisible unless he scans. So he's going to go ahead and scan, but then Alienoid brings out brings out his his Hydralis as they go in, and the Thor's up on the ramp. He's going to go ahead and bury and bury the lurkers. Lurkers making quick work of what's going on. He go, he goes ahead and brings out a Banshee, but that may be too little too late. As they go in, he will go ahead and lift off, trying to trying to just waste a little bit of time, making sure that that he'll go ahead and drop some Marines in there. And I think that will probably do it for game one. He does drop the scans. Okay, Toast with Dang. And Alienoid, GG, Toast with Zerg, OP, GG, and Alienoid will take game one. We will have game two starting very shortly. I will go ahead and adjust it on the, let's see. With Alienoid taking game one. So the two teammates are actually conversing right now, and we will be right back. Okay, as we are set up for game two out of a best of three. Game two out of a best of three, going to get set up soon. Let me make a few other announcements to the two teammates that are going, that are playing against each other. All right, here we go. Going into game number two with Toast versus ver versus Alienoid, the two the two Amherst players. 
Alienoid being a senior, Toast being a sophomore, these these two have been teammates with it. There we are with the GLHF. Oh, I gotta press Alt N. Oh, there we go. There we go. As we bring it up, Alienoid is up one game to zero. We'll go and bring up the the production tab. And Alienoid exited out for some reason. So we'll go to the score screen. There must have been something a matter. And I will accept. There we go. They're going to go in again. They must have mess messed up something. Good. There we go. Toast setting the game to 25 minutes. And here we go, a restart of game number two. All right, here we go with the good luck, have fun. That's what GLHF means, good luck, have fun. Again, between these um, two teammates who have, who have played together in several games, they are, they are teammates in, in League of Legends. Last year, they both, played, they both played StarCraft with Toast being state champion and Alienoid being, being um, getting, getting third place. And and yeah, they shake hands beforehand, tell each other good luck, and we are off to standard builds again. Eight toast being being the Terran race, which is a human race. You you have you have SCVs, which is what these harvester units are, and they can build several buildings. Um, going into going into factory armory, and and they are a a, uh, the nice thing about StarCraft is that all the races are truly balanced. And so if one person, it's kind of a rock, paper, scissors type of game to which you have to kind of, if you know what, you're, if you know what your opponent is going into and you know what race he's, he's playing, it will affect your build on, on whatever you feel that you need to go. And so here we go with Extractor. He's going to build... Alienoid building building his his extractor. These these overlords are what give Alienoid supply. So Zerg, as far as being able to spread, okay, they have this black stuff here, which is which is called creep, and they can only put buildings on creep, and so that's why you'll see um, Zergling buildings all very close together. His spawning pool is is going to finish, so that will allow his little larva. If you can now see, he can morph it into a Zergling. <coughs> Zerglings being the base unit um, for for uh, Zerg. Actually, 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 the the drones here. This is the Zergling harvest, harvester unit. It actually morphs into buildings. So this evolution chamber in which in which this is what this is what you gain up upgrades from and this and this roach warren one of these drones will turn into we'll see it here we'll see it happen here oh nope okay he's just going down to mine so queens can also queens are 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 units that can inject eggs into the the hatchery so that more larvae fall off. And so when you so when you go ahead and good grief, I have a tickle in the back of my throat, excuse me. <coughs> God dang, must be the corona. Anyway. So when these so so we'll we'll sit here a minute as both of them are going pretty standard builds. Toast getting his getting his getting his siege tank out early. We'll see if we can see the these go ahead and pop off. No, that'll be a little while yet, but it'll be more larva pop popping off. If you don't use that, 
um, then the hatchery will stop at three larvae. This one already having four larvae on it. This one here, he's going to morph this into a layer, which is which which will allow him to build um, more buildings, basically buildings up here to allow him to uh, to allow alienoid more advanced units. He does get out a few roaches, roaches being being a very strong zerg zerg unit. They they are they are considered armored, and they and they spit saliva. Um, we get a scan from Toast going going ahead and checking out to see what Alienoid is doing. He morphs his, he morphs it into a Ravager that has the corrosive bile, and Toast is going to push out with a bunch of Marines, with a bunch of Marines and a siege tank. All while all while building on the back, we will we will check him out here. He's going to go ahead and go up the ramp, and we will see how this works okay he's gonna get his tank up he's gonna siege up his tank first and then biff big tank hit right there another big tank hit as he goes ahead with his with his marines okay his hit his his marines taking out the zergling and then the ravagers going going ahead and using their corrosive bile to take out the tanks take out the siege tanks as as toast goes goes ahead and decides well Without the siege tank, Marines ain't gonna do a whole lot by themselves. They only do six damage with a range of five. So, so the corrosive bile's paying off for, for Alienoid as he goes ahead and continues to macro up. He is starting a third hatchery, which is almost completed. His second hatchery is 12 out of 16. He does have both of his gases going. So this is where Zerg really starts to ramp up. He started a hydrogen. He started an, an infestation pit and almost finished with his, with his plus one attack for missile weapons for Zerg. As Alienoid is on one, two, two bases still, almost fully saturated on his second base. He, he is going ahead and rallying all of his SEVs there as he continues to build. And he is finally up on Thors. And so he's gonna go ahead, get those out. He's also building, building some Banshees. Banshees being a very unique, unique unit um, it is a aircraft unit, and you can up upgrade them so they can run around cloaked. So you can't see them unless you have detection. Okay. Oh, here comes an attack from Alienoid. He's gonna go ahead and get cheeky and pop in with those with those corrosive vials. Okay. Toast goes go goes ahead and scans to see what is going on, and Alienoid will go ahead and. And take his take his army and head it back as as um, Toast goes ahead and I believe he's going to start a third base. We'll see where he starts it at. If he's going to put it here in the standard spot, and he is waiting. Oh, I'll bet he's waiting for minerals. They cost um, to start up a new base cost cost 400 minerals to go ahead and start that up. Both of them are very, both Alienoid and Toast are very close in supply as the hatch goes down. Okay, another, another, another scan from Toast. Alien, he knows now Alienoid is on a third base as he spreads all over the map and, and started his fourth base already with Toast going, going ahead and Finishing up his third, he's going ahead and moving out. He's going to go ahead and move out. He has a couple of Banshees here, along with a few Thors and a Siege Tank behind. And he's going to go ahead and move them across the map. Probably going to look to take out this third base right here. We'll check out Alienoid's army here with, with plenty of Ravagers, a few Hydralis, and he's now morphing out lurkers which again they bury into the ground that's the only way they can deal damage and toast goes ahead and starts in and there are the ravagers there is everybody he's going to go ahead and siege up on the back 
And I don't know. Oh, there's the scan. He's going to go ahead and take out the lurkers. He's going to go ahead and move forward as the ra as as the ravagers go ahead and hit with their corrosive biles, but they don't have the a whole lot of extra hit points to 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 do that with. He's going to go ahead and keep the stuff out of his way, and then here come here comes Toast. He goes ahead and he finishes out this. He finishes out the base, and will he push in? Will he push in? No, he's going to go ahead. Oh, no, Alienoid still has, he still has there. He's trying to get him out. He tr still has his drones. Drones at that point. Now, at this point, I think Toast should probably move in, but he's going to get his upgrades going, building on the back. He's going to morph in. Okay, he's going to morph in. He has a few more Ravagers now. Toast possibly waiting to see if the... Possibly waiting on scans. Let's see. He's going ahead. He's going to build a second one. Let's see if he's out of scans. Let me look at that. He is. He has one scan left. Does not feel comfortable pushing in on one scan. He did take out a fully saturated base. And he left behind a siege tank. So so they're just going to go ahead. Zerg unit is going to go ahead and just take that out take that out so so alienoid now on two mining bases and a third one built but is not but but does not have any units mining at it he's, he is building 12 drones so that will very very quickly be saturated out toast again on a full three three bases but only has two factories building at a time and a barracks and he is just going banshees. Did he get a, oh, he has a second orbital command, so he will have a few extra orbitals right there and a third base with an orbital command, so he should have plenty of scans as he, as he takes his, as he takes his units and moves them down. Alienoid going, going to go ahead and scout. Toast at 157 supply, Alienoid at 101 supply. Toast building seven supply depots so he can stop being supply blocked um oh no he found that he found the third base from alienoid he's going to go ahead and max that out there he sieges up the tanks going going ahead and taking that out he's going to go ahead and move in alienoid just just trying to play a little cat and mouse trying to get the lurkers in there but the lurkers and the corrosive vial and just oh it's look at the massacre all the murder all the carnage going on but I think it with the, uh, oh, with the, no, he's out of scans, and he doesn't know they're there. Oh, they took out that, that Thor, and the Thor is going to, who wins with the Thor and two lurkers? I'll tell you who wins. It's the lurkers. They went toast with another scan. He knows that lurker is there, but his Thor is only 60 hit points out of 400 as they both back off from this attack and kind of lick their wounds, taking out, taking out the expansion from from alienoid as alienoid is now just on two bases again and two hatcheries only two hatcheries building um to make to make to make units from that is a rough place that is not where you want to be as a zerg as 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 toast comes back with thor's banshees and building and and building armor Alienoid coming in with coming in with a bunch of links, both of them going back trying to trying to remax out. He has one, two, three lurkers. Again, lurker being fully upgraded on plus three attack and plus one armor. So so that will definitely help. Let's 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 look at Toast. Toast has plus two attack and plus one armor. As he goes ahead. He is attempting to remax out, I believe. Is he still only on two factories? Golly, still only producing out of two factories. Okay, he should be on four or five by now, but it is what it is, I guess. So here we go. Okay, he he's almost he's starting to mine out really heavily, and so his his third is fully saturated. He has started a fourth base that is just mining gas which is exactly what you need to be doing. Alienoid goes ahead and double expands on that. What an aggressive play with a double double expansion trying to get out trying to get out more units faster, trying to trying to be able to to 
to produce. And here comes Toast with, with Banshees, Marines, and Thors. The Banshees being plus one armor and plus zero attack. They are a flying unit, and Lurkers cannot hit flying units. Hydralists do, though. So the Hydralists will be wanting to snipe those flyers out. And the Lurkers, oh. So he goes ahead and he scans to see, and he scans into him, and here comes the battle. And Alienoid pulls back, pulls back, trying to let the Lurkers get in the damage, but then, and then they snipe out the Banshees, and then here comes all of the murder. As, as the Thors are trying to desperately get in there and get to the, oh, they got one. We got three Thors and a, oh, and that, where was the GG? And that, and boy, do we have a game. Toast taking game two. What an exciting, exciting play. This, this best of three match will be pushed to a game three. What an exciting round between the two of them, Toast and Alienoid standing up, standing up and just and talking to one another. Talking talking to one another, a little bit of a little bit of friendly banner. What an exciting match. Both both congratulating each other. Man, what an exciting, exciting round. All right. And here we are. We are back, getting ready to go ahead and and start this final championship match. If Alienoid and Host would stop talking to one another <laughs> before the match starts, I said, like, "Get ready." The game takes quite a bit of brain power, so sometimes they give ourselves a little bit of a brain break. There goes Alienoid back to his computer. Here we go for game number three between Alienoid and Toast. The game starting, you should be able to hear a beeping sound for each three, two, one, zero. Some, okay, very good. So it looks like there's some in-game sound because I want everybody to be able to hear all of, woo, my, moves moves too far back and back and forth i want everybody to hear all of the murder happening within this game so everybody good luck have fun alienoid alienoid with with ak again these two players been friends for years and good luck have jf with the <laughs> With 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 the third <laughs> GLHF with the J in there. Good luck, have fun, which was a miscast from Toast. So these two guys being able to oh, let's bring up the supply tab. Boop. There we go. Toast with Toast with one win. Alienoid with one win. And we'll bring up the production tab. As we go in, Alienoid again. Standard Zerg build, the Zerg race being more the the actual the actual guys morphing into buildings so that is a really fun thing all of the zerg gross slime oh yes all of the zerg slime and all of the gooshiness i like it i love responding to twitch chat all of the all of the gross sounds the zerg makes i'm so glad you guys are able to all join and be able and be able to hear that so here we go with Alienoid going ahead, dropping the spawning pool, going to drop an extractor along along with his along along with his extra hat with his expansion with his expansion hatch, hatchery. Toast going ahead and dropping and expanding with his command center off on the side with a standard supply depot into barracks or racks into into a into a command center going and looking there at 20 workers to 21 workers that's exactly what they want to do he's going to get toast going ahead and get his orbital command early going to get it earlier than then he then he has when he has drops his second gas goes it goes ahead and starts mining that out so so he, so he can get to that 50 gas and drop and start building 
his factory with Alienoid finishing up with its spawning pool, going into an evolution chamber and a roach warrant in case he needs to churn out some roaches. Roaches churning out roaches and then being able to go into and into Ravagers, which, which are a really good counter to tanks, both of them on very similar supply, 26 to 27, 22 workers to 23 workers. Um, and and alienoid going ahead and building into his building his hatchery into a layer going ahead and injecting injecting larva into into the hatchery so we can build more units quickly toast getting out some defensive marines with the with the reactor on the side of of a barracks he can build two marines at the same time so the factory building a tech lab on the side, which which gives you access to better units. So he'll so Toast will be looking at building a siege tank. Okay, he still is building SEVs. He I believe he has them both on a hotkey right there. He has them both rallied there, so he can build SEVs. He can build these harvester units from this base and this base at the same time, and they immediately start start mining. He has his barracks on another hotkey and a factory with with two siege tanks built or two siege tanks queued up. The first one completes and then the second one will start right away. Let's look back up at Alienoid and all the slimy gushiness. We have we have lings along with roaches and then he's morphed one into a ravager. Again with that corrosive bile being able to take out siege tanks. Um, both of them building very hard, macroing up. He alienoid just now researching me metabolic boost, which which will give his zerglings the little the little units right right there, the little ones, the little ones to give them extra speed. Toast is going to go ahead and scan to see what alienoid has as as he notices the ravagers and toast with the four minute push going to go ahead and run at him with marines and a siege tank because why not and building on the back all the, all the while sometimes starcraft isn't about maxing out first it's about keeping up pressure against your opponent the bad thing is though that when you attack you lose all the time your opponent gets all the time it takes for you to run across the map Oh no, and he just found the, oh, just as Alienoid pops it down. And there it goes, and I don't know if that was really worth it as as, as Alienoid will clean up the tanks and, mar and, and Marines at the cost of a hatchery. Alienoid should just be able to just really quickly pop that sucker. Yep, here it comes. Right now, he'll just pop that hatchery back down. I don't know if that was worth the units as Alienoid is hanging back at the top of the ramp, at the top of this choke point right here. This choke point being a very good spot to let to just funnel guys in one at a time. Oh, here we go. Toast is already on Thor's. He has his armory built. He is not getting any upgrades as of yet as he's running low. Um, I think that attack kind of distracted him a little bit. He needs to be dropping both of his gases and starting on a third base somewhere. He has not started a third base anywhere. And he does have a Thor, a single siege tank, and Marines. Marines being 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 the basic unit. Oh, he's gonna have to put this one up so he can and drop it back down. That way he can put a tech lab on it. He does have some Banshees being built. He does have his orbital command done, so so he has access to scans, because uh, because he's probably sure of alienoid teching up into there it is the lurker dead teching up into lurkers alienoid with with an expansion and 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 a third and a fourth on the way so. We will see if he can drone up into that. He already started his lurker den. Lurkers come from hydralisks. So these, we'll, we'll wait for him to, to stop, but these creepy little little things here, they, they spit needles that can hit both ground units and air units. And so these are the things that can morph into Lurkers being being the creatures that will burrow down into the ground and become invisible unless you have scans or some form of detection. 
Roach being right there, he's a, he's a little hard to, hard to see. It deals 18 damage, but can only if you if you, if you look at where it says targets, it can only target ground. Oh, and plus one armor just finished. So so oh, lurker den is done. Here they go. Alienoid is morphing into lurkers. Toast with a 20 supply lead on Alienoid, but lurkers pretty much are counter just Thors. They deal extra damage to armored units, so the Lurkers deal extra damage to siege tanks. They will deal extra damage to Thors, but will not deal extra damage to Marines, but Marines only have 45 hit points with, with, with the Lurker dealing 22 damage or 33 versus armored. Oh, here we go. We got something. Oh, we had a little Ling run in. So here's a big, huge transfer of drones. Alienoid with 26 lings on the way, ready to rock. That should be an exciting thing. He's already getting upgrading missile attacks. He, he's upgrading his lurkers. He's upgrading his hydralisks, getting ready, and getting a baneling nest. Baneling nest, that should be very interesting. That should be very interesting. You can morph your lurk zerglings into banelings, which actually explode and deal monstrous amounts of damage, but at the loss of a unit. Transferring down some drones as as Alienoid tries to saturate out this this third base, trying to macro it up. Toast going, going, going ahead. He is going to drop both gases. Already mining on one. He has, he has his third base almost fully saturated. He has his natural ex saturated, and he's starting to mine out of his main. You can see 16 out of eight. There's less mineral patches here. He's starting to mine out. Don't know what he's putting there. Ooh, a factory there. That's a really bad place to put a factory because nothing will be able to walk out of that place. So. So it'll be interesting to see how many units get built out of this out of this factory and then get stuck right here that they can't get out. Toast macroing up really hard now with 100 with with an extra 80 supply over over Alienoid. He has Alienoid has to get this base saturated out. Put queens on it. Start it. Start injects. Okay, he needs a few more he needs a few more drones on this as he goes ahead. He's gonna scout with some with some with some zerglings. He's gonna scout out to see if there's any extra bases. And Toast is moving in. Here he comes. He he has a bunch of rocks in the way. I don't know if he's gonna take these out. Nope. He's just gonna go ahead and move right in, right in through this through this choke point. Alienoid sees it. He's gonna go ahead and move his army down. He's gonna bury his lurkers, and here comes the slaughter. Here comes the murder with corrosive vials going and hitting the front Thor, doing massive amounts of damage. Toast goes ahead and scans again, but the lurkers are just too much. Lurkers are too much. They are, they're gonna go ahead and go in, go back and forth as they try to, and the siege tanks firing from the back. And they take out and, oh, look at that. It's just three siege tanks left, still firing. Still firing, going to, going to take, take out the last of the extractors with Alienoid. Oof. With, he has lurkers out front. So these siege tanks are sitting outside of the lurker range. This is the range of the siege tanks as they as they come in, they take out the first tank. They're gonna go they're gonna go ahead. Siege tanks do have a minimum. They take out the second tank. What an efficient use of 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 Zerglings by Alienoid. Taking out taking out two siege tanks with just a handful. Just a handful as Toast continues to macro on the back. He now has oversaturated. He has he has a, a fourth base now building. He goes ahead and moves back. Alienoid is is down here with two saturated. He's gonna go ahead and get adrenal glands for for his zerglings and zergling melee melee attacks. He is morphing in a lurker and about 18 more lings, as as he goes ahead and and burns and burns through his minerals. And he gets up 
a nice defense of Lings. Look at that. He had that would be eight, eight, 16, 20, or 18 Zerglings along along with one, two, three, four, five height, five, five lurkers. Bad thing in that is that, is, is that Lynx can only hit ground units. Okay, so he'll need to keep his Hydralis alive. He is transferring drones across, which is exactly what he needs to do. He needs to go in, he needs to go ahead and start getting gas going on. And here's Toast almost remaxed with another push with his with his several oh well he only got he only got one guy stuck there as they're gonna go ahead and push back across the map the flyers get there first they're going to double check to see if alienoid has rebuilt it the marines will will go ahead these flying units can only hit ground units so they're kind of unique air to ground as Toast goes ahead and pushes in again, he runs in with with the scan the hydralists move out front trying trying to defend the lurker count, but I think it is just with 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 a single tank shelling from the background, and they oh they're out they're out of range, and that is it. That was game three of the championship match of Division Two, and as and as I look forward, both Toast and Alienoid hug, and then Alien and then Toast must have said something stupid because then Alienoid shoves him away. So what a great display of sportsmanship and friendship and what a great way to end the StarCraft season for both of these players. Toast becoming, be, Toast being state champion and Alienoid as the state runner up. What a, what a way to end it. And that should be, oh my. And what a great way to end it with 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 both Toast and Alienoid teammates being able to being able to share in this in this victory and such a good match and such a good round of StarCraft. It was fun to cast. These guys are great kids. Toast repeating his state championship from last year. Alienoid who got third last year, getting second this year. Um, I just couldn't be more proud as 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 a coach of both of these young men. So that'll be it for me. We will go ahead and move to Coach Hines for the award ceremony shortly. We'll see you then.